You know how I said those soap bubble nails gave me inspiration for something? Yeah, this is it. So when I made the soap bubble nails for the first time, I kept seeing, seeing snakes. And snakes to me led to a basilisk, which led to Harry Potter. So we are doing basilisk and phoenix nails for Harry Potter. And as an additional twist, we're doing them on a friend of mine and a co-worker named Debbie. So the first thing we're going to do is grab this dragon eye image off of the Maniology M092 plate. Look at how that came out. It is absolutely awesome. It looks so good in person. And I'm going to go through. <clears throat> we did put fake nails on her. These are not sculpted. They're just press on glue down nails. Um, so <clears throat> there are a few issues with shaping that kind of stuff. I'm well aware of that. These aren't supposed to be professional. This is just girls playing, okay? So, <clears throat> we came in and did two coats of gel in the easel down the road from uh, Finger Paints Polish. Now, Debbie wanted these to where she could wear them again if she wanted to. So, that's what, another reason why we did them on the press on. Now, in order to get the design of the snake going across the nails, I'm going to take a clear top coat from Uber Chic. And I'm just going to paint what looks like a tail of the snake on this. I realize it's very hard to see right here. It will get a little better as we go on. But it's just a very thin little pattern. And I'm going to very thinly fill it in with top coat. And then we're going to soap bubble it and cure for 60 seconds. And once that comes out of the lamp, we go ahead and wipe everything down. And it should leave us a very textured look like snakeskin. And there you go. I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for you to see it here, but it does get better as we go on through the other nails. And Debbie is a cuticle chewer. I didn't do most of that to her, I don't think. <laughs> we need to double check that for sure. But uh, <clears throat> she likes to pick at her nails a lot. Love you, but you're a picker. So <clears throat> we're going to do this across all the nails. And as we do this, I'm just going to kind of move and give it movement. So it looks like there's a snake slithering across her nails. So honestly, through here, this part is just kind of wash, rinse, and repeat. We're basically doing bubbles over the top coat, cure it for 60, move to the next nail. Bubbles over the top coat, cure it for 60, move to the next nail. Once you finish with all of that, you should have something that looks very similar to this. And the next thing we're going to do is take this chrome powder from Maniology. It's called Scarab Wings. And we're going to go ahead and start to fill this in. And this one gives me such giggles because it kind of looks like a snake skin, but it also to me looks like a tropical rainforest leaf covered in dew. So there's actually a lot of different things you could do with this. You can kind of stretch the bubbles out while you're putting them on the nail and it gives it different shapes. So if you just do straight up and down bubbles, different shape than if you kind of stretch them out. But what I'm going to do now is go in and add the color to the basilisk. And what I'm doing is just using the two chrome powders, the one I spilled all over myself and the other one. <clears throat> that is going to go across the bottom, like the underside of a reptile. Think kind of like a crocodile, how one side's darker on the top and then it's lighter on the bottom. That's kind of what I'm doing across all of these nails so that that snake skin look will stand out. And I did have to go over this twice, just so you know. And the more you blend it in, the shinier it gets, the more depth that it has. So don't, you know, just kind of shortchange yourself when it comes down to actually rubbing everything in. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to top coat the places where I want the pigment to stay. If I don't want the pigment there, I'm not putting a top coat on it. On the whole there might be a little bit where it slipped down or something but you just want to top coat the area you want to stay on the nail because the joy of pigment powder is if you don't like it you can use a little alcohol and wipe it off so I did the buffing top coated everything or I top coated it and then I buffed it all down just like I did in the soap bubble nails and I'm going back through now and kind of polishing it back up with alcohol making sure everything's nice and clean and there's no dust on my nails well, on Debbie's nails. <laughs> and then we're going to go in and do a final clear top coat on top of that. And while we do that, Debbie could not, she was getting twitchy because I just taught Debbie how to stamp not too long ago. So she wanted to start working on the reverse stuff. And she's going in and just kind of filling in this eye for me. I wanted to do light and bright around the eye and little smatterings. I wanted it to look very kind of highlighty. 
all through here. And we kind of talked about it and I was cutting out my finger while we were talking about that stuff in there. Um, she even went in and mixed ghoulish with poison and got kind of a little bit lighter, yellower, greeny as a highlight over the eye. Love it. And I'm going in and taking um, just some extra tape off my lint roller and just barely tapping it into there to remove that kind of fringe away from it. And we don't need that for this design. It's not relevant to this design. So we're just going to take it off. And because the black part is the actual original stamp is weighted down by the polish on top of it. It makes it much easier to pluck it off later than it does if you first do it when you first try to stamp the image. So she's, she's over there working on it. And we're trying to get this done. No joke. Between shaping and filing the nails and all that kind of stuff that we did, we worked on this for about six hours. So um, Debbie, po Debbie, Debbie Potter. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> She'd probably laugh at that if she heard it. I'm going to have to make sure she watches that. Debbie is quite the Harry Potter fan. I very much love Harry Potter as well. And so when I told her I had this idea just stuck in my head, it had to go. She was like, yep, I'm your girl. So we're, we're doing this on her. And look how cool that came out. So much fun. Now, while that finishes drying, we're going to go ahead and stamp the nails. <clears throat> we did one nail in red. One nail in green. So one for Slytherin, one for Gryffindor. And we're just putting the ha matching house crest on there. We could have done the snake, you know, further across and all that stuff. But Debbie really wanted to get that on there. And then as part of the lore from the books, we're also putting empty spider webs around the basilisk body. Because spiders flee before it. So we need a little bit of spider <clears throat> recognition in there too. And I'm doing that on two nails. They're just little tiny accents. This is off the new kind of Harry Potter plates from Maniology, the M152. There's all kinds of Harry Potter-esque images on that plate. So see, we're just kind of stamping them down as little accents in the corners. And we'll top coat another final top coat over it to make sure everything stays on. Now, moving on to the other hand. I am. This is the hand that's going to have the basilisk and the phoenix on it. So for the background where we're going to put the basilisk eye, I am using that scarab wing all over the whole nail. It is so freaking pretty. Oh my gosh. If you've never played with it like this over gel as just a straight on chrome, you need to. It's freaking beautiful. Like I wasn't a huge fan of it at first. Now I'm going to have to like buy another one and make sure I don't run out because it's really freaking pretty. And we're going to go through and just stamp down the eye on top of that. Now here's where I didn't think this through all the way. Um, <clears throat> the chrome powder covered up all the sticky stuff, dirt, so <laughs> it didn't stick down. So what I did is I very slowly peeled it back away to make sure nothing came off. We went ahead and put a very thin coat of gel on it, cured it for 10 seconds, just enough to make it sticky, and then went back in and pressed everything down. And as you can see, it came off much easier that time, and I just went ahead and pressed the rest down with my finger. And after I get it all situated and good to go, I top coated it with a gel top coat. And I put a little green gem right where the eye is. Do you see that there? So it gives it just a little bit more liveliness. And look how much that all pops over that green. Now my idea for this next nail is to start transitioning into the phoenix look. And my hope was to do like gold and red and blue, like a big burst of color. Like here comes the phoenix, all right? And, uh... <clears throat> That's what my gold did. And uh, that's what my red did. <laughs> and I even tried a little blue in there. And it all just went to crap real fast. So again, that's the kind of good thing about chrome powder. Is that if you don't like it, you can wipe it off. I kind of thought maybe if I kept layering it, it would look better and better. And it just got worse and worse. So I took a cotton swab or cotton ball with some rubbing alcohol on it. And just rubbed everything back off. We went back in and decided to make it a green and black glitter nail, kind of to start the transition over to the Phoenix. Um, you know, sometimes designs just don't work out the way you had hoped. And for whatever reason, that gold was not cutting it. So we're just going to kind of... So I had hoped to do a glitter fade, but I got a little crazy with the fan brush and a little impatient. So we're doing green and black glitter on this nail. <laughs> and then the next one will be the Phoenix. I'm kind of looking at this design like a culmination of all the stuff I did during challenge week where I got to play with all those new techniques and just put them into one mani. So for the background on the Phoenix, we're going to stamp flames and we're going to do the chrome powder stamping. So I put the gold chrome 
on there and we're going to stamp it that way and that worked perfectly it came out so pretty and i can't even tell you how gorgeous this is in person especially compared to video like video doesn't even do it justice and i think it's pretty on the video but in person whoa all that glitter sparkling and shining everywhere it's just green and gold and red and gold and phoenix everywhere i love it and i really love the basilisk i do wish i had made the body going across the nails a little bit bigger i think i was thinking debbie's kind of normal hand size not what size the nails were so stamp some red and gold over it we're gonna grab this little phoenix now you can't see very much detail on him but i don't have anything that looks just like fox so this was the closest we could get to it and still hopefully give out the impression that it's harry potter so that all the other harry potter lunatics out there uh you're now my brothers and sisters <laughs> And for whatever reason, I didn't feel like this was going to stamp right in the stamper. So I popped the stamper head out and just pressed it down and it came out perfect. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. We did green and gold glitter on the pinky and Debbie really wanted this like red acrylic gem on there. Um, it's kind of almost like a phoenix heart or like the start of a flame. So there's lots of um, interpretation in these nails, but both of us absolutely loved how the final result came out. I think it's beautiful. I would wear this on myself all day, every day, and twice on Christmas. Three times on Christmas. Stunning. Let me know what you think. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great one. Bye-bye.